Our first speaker is Emma Quinn from Nesta. Uh, welcome, and you have 10 minutes. Thank you. Thank you. OK, so um, I'm Emma Quinn. I'm the program manager for the Digital Research and Development Fund for the Arts at Nesta. Uh, Nesta is managing the fund. We're an innovation charity uh, with a mission to help people and organizations bring great ideas to life. It's quite vague and it's quite broad. Uh, if you look at the Nesta website, you'll find out more about the programs we support. Um, this fund is a collaboration between Arts Council England and the Arts and Humanities Research Council. And the collaboration has resulted in just under £7 million worth of grants being given away to 52 arts organisations around England. So it's just England that we're supporting because it's Arts Council England. Um, the application stage is over, so we've given out the money and we're now entering the dissemination phase where projects are coming to an end, we're starting to see the results of their research. So the fund was set up um, as a result of the work that was done on NT Live. I'm sure a lot of you know about NT Live, even if you haven't seen it. Uh, NT Live is um, a broadcast medium, basically, for the National Theatre. They broadcast live productions to cinemas and theatres around the country and now globally, so that people, for reasons of ge geography or for cost, can actually see a, a live production, even though it's being filmed and screened um, in their own region. Um, the model wasn't a new one. Uh, it was first um, done by the Metropolitan Opera in New York, uh, and they've been broadcasting performances since the late 2006. Um, but it took a cash investment from Nesta and the Arts Council England, and the National Theatre's desire and investment of resources to test the model within the United Kingdom. Um, We've supported 52 projects. We're still supporting them. They're still ongoing, all of them. Um, they span a variety of different genres and technologies, but they are all funded because of their capacity to benefit the wider arts sector. Um, we expect all the, the projects on the fund to provide information or guides or business models or access to software or code um, to enable other arts organizations to make informed decisions about the different technologies being tested and to implement them as easily as possible. So each project has three partners. There's a technology partner, there's a research partner, and there's the organization with the arts project. Now, on the whole, it's arts organizations. So it could be a theater or a, a gallery or a venue. But we also, um, it could be a commercial company who has a great idea. So we're not kind of uh, limiting it just to arts organizations. Uh, we expect all the projects we funded to test their proposition rigorously. This is the key thing. Um, they have to be honest about their findings, um, whether it's good or bad. Um, the projects that prove that something doesn't work are as valuable as those that prove something does work. It's, um, it saves arts organisations a lot of time and money if they know what not to spend money on. So if they know that something doesn't work, they know they shouldn't spend their time and money on investing in it, that's really valuable for them. Um, many arts organisations in the UK rely on um, hearsay or what other arts organisations are doing. Um, they gauge whether to invest in a technological solution to something because they've seen someone else has done it. So that's a nice website or the Tate have done a great app. Um, but they don't know whether it's worked. They don't know how many people have used it. They don't know whether it's actually reaching those audiences. We're hoping to change that with this fund so that we can actually prove whether things actually work or not and what you need to do to implement that. Okay, so I'm going to talk through a few examples of projects we've funded. There are 52, I'm not going to go through all of them. If you go to the website, um, then you'll be able to find out more about the projects uh, individually. Um, the first one uh, is led by a company called Extant. Um, currently, people with impaired vision experience theatrical performance through audio description. Sometimes they're allowed to go backstage before a performance and touch the costumes or see what, feel the set. Um, but basically, they have uh, a theatrical experience that's kind of secondary to the visual experience. It's not something that's designed for them. So Extant want to change this. They are the only performing arts company of visually impaired people in the United Kingdom. And they're working with their technology partner, Haunted Pliers, and the research partner, The Open University. And they're investigating how to make a performance that can provide an arts experience that is equally captivating for both blind and sighted people. 
So it builds on previous work they've done. They've created the haptic lotus, which is the device you see here. Uh, and that's a, a handheld digital device um, that you can use in an immersive theatre setting where people can physically interact through touch in that setting that uses little or no visual stimuli. So they're in the dark, basically. And this device changes, it opens and closes depending on where they are in the room using sensors. Um, the next one is Coney. Uh, they're a London-based theatre company. Uh, they make interactive theatre performances that rely on participation of their audiences. And they give their audiences the agency to make decisions uh, that affect the course of the action in their shows. Um, they're testing whether digital technology can be used uh, in an interactive, immersive theatre setting to bring live audiences together with online audiences in a shared experience. So think about the NT model, they're just broadcasting a performance. Here they're actually asking people to interact with something that's being broadcast live. Um, so they work with a technology partner, Showcaster, and the research partner at Goldsmiths. And their project, Better Than Life, explores how an audience viewing a live stream performance online can join in the decision making uh, alongside a live audience while also enjoying a unique version of an interactive live show. Um, and they wanted to create a game-like experience for online viewers. Um, they've built on Showcaster's live streaming platform uh, and audiences can watch the performance in their web browser and they can choose their own camera angles including backstage, uh, work with other online viewers as well as the live audience to affect the action on stage and make decisions about plot and content of the performance. Uh, in recent years, we've seen the digital revolution in the music industry. Digital downloads, piracy and streaming services have all had an impact on business models in the sector, but they've also had an impact on audience behaviour. Music consumers increasingly <laughs> music streaming services or download single tracks, not only limiting their spending, but also limiting their engagement with the artist and not experiencing the whole album or the artworks that go with that. So the music agency Script have been working with Agency Mobile and Anglia Ruskin uh, University to explore the potential of apps to deliver a package of rich content, including music, in a viable way. So they're not the first to produce an album app, but they're the first to try and develop a replicable format. Uh, and they're openly testing the model. And they're looking at costs and benefits for artists, music consumers, and record companies. And for the last few months, they've been talking to record labels, running focus group groups, collaborating with uh, young, up-and-coming indie band Francois and the Atlas Mountains. This is the album app they created for them. And this was launched earlier this year. This is the first um, chart-eligible app in the world, apparently. They had to do a lot of work with uh, Google, with Apple, trying to get, and with the PRS Music Foundation to get this eligible. So they've done a lot of work, sort of breaking ground on that one. Right, this one is um, Riot. It's uh, Nottingham Castle, which is a museum. Many museums and historic buildings rely on artifacts in glass cabinets uh, with written material to provide context. It's not the most thrilling uh, setting in the world. Um, Nottingham museums are testing the potential of an augmented reality to bring history to life in front of visitors' eyes. Um, they're enabling visitors to interact with the dramatic history of the building and they hope to de deepen audience engagement and enhance visitor experience. Um, Riot 1831 at Nottingham Castle is an app that will enable them to view the castle as a 3D interactive environment full of characters that give speeches and describe the experience of the riots. And these speeches are taken from numerous accounts of the riots at the, at the museums. Uh, the digital interpretation is uh, developing alongside the redesign of a new exhibition. And the app is available for the iPad with a view to support Android and other operating systems later. Um, the project involves the development of a mobile device app combining image recognition with immersive animation and sounds. And they're investigating techni technical solutions needed for arts organisations to produce this kind of app going forward. And finally, Talking Statues. Um, Sing London is the lead organisation on Talking Statues. Uh, and their proposition is, can near-field communication engage passers-by with cultural offerings? Um, so, near-field communication, or NFC, is widely used in transport. So, if you've got an Oyster card, you use it to touch in and out. That's near-field communication. Um, it provides potential for simple, low-cost technology, and there have been examples of organisations using it, um, such as the National Trust Soho Stories, um, but many of them require the downloading of an app um, to access it. The Museum of London have used it within the museum itself, but not outside. 
Um, and this project explores how the technology can reach beyond the walls of museums and cultural venues uh, to new and non-traditional audiences. It asks, how does NFC compare to QR codes or other phone options? Now, I wanted to test it, they had to use all three. They used QR codes, they used Bluetooth, and they used Thank you. 